Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. Now, I recently read how the digital transformation is ushering in a new era of communications in a white paper for a company called Vonage, who you must have heard of. And in this white paper, it says that keeping the leader over the competition, it no longer means having the best products or the lowest prices. Instead, successful companies are closely tied to an organization's ability to recognize shifts in the market landscape and its capacity to respond by adapting quickly. And I think that's something that we forget so often now. It's a big change. Smaller, younger and agile startups completely get it, whereas your, your big Fortune 500 companies, a lot of them are a little bit sluggish to react. Now, the white paper also explores how the digital transformation is disrupting the traditional business landscape because today's consumers care more about superb customer service and delightful experiences, rather than making a decision solely based on price or product features. And in this digital era, the customer experience is the new background for differentiation. Because businesses must make digital interactions personally and contextually relevant, And that's with every single interaction if they really want to thrive and meet today's consumer expectations. Now, this is a topic that should appeal to everyone listening as it also affects everyone listening. So I invited Omar Javed. He's the Chief Product Officer at Vonage, where he's going to discuss all those findings, voice over IP, omni-channel conversations, and also the importance of adapting and delivering meaningful culture change. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to California so we can speak with Omar from Vonage. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, So Omar Javed, I'm the Chief Product Officer of Vonage. And basically I am in charge of all of the you know, the, the products that we offer, both the residential products and the enterprise products that we have, as well as uh, the communication APIs, which is the which is part of the Nexmo acquisition that we made about a year and a half ago. Now, you guys do have a reputation as a leading communications and collaboration software company that actually provides solutions for both businesses and consumers. But can you bring anyone hearing about you guys for the first time up to speed with exactly what problems that you solve and what makes you guys unique? Yeah, perfect. That's a great question. I'll give you a somewhat long-winded answer, uh, but I think it's going to be relevant to answering your question. Vonage, we started out as a as a disruptive innovator in, in communications, you know, 15 plus years ago, um, because we, we realized that broadband would change everything, right? Specifically the founders of Vonage, one of whom is still on our board as a uh, our chairman, Jeffrey Citron. They saw that broadband would change everything and that this 100 plus year old telephony network would just become an app on top of broadband, right? And that was what that was the origins of voice over IP. So we were a pioneer in voice over IP. We did that and built this great um, business providing essentially residential telephony um, uh, for for uh, for the home uh, in the US and in the UK. And it, you know that was a great business for us for a number of years. You know anybody that's in that business, you see that base. It's not a growth business, right? Be really because of the rise of mobile phones, the desire, really, the fundamental desire that you know that market for home phone services is, is definitely not growing, and depending on the market you're talking about, declining, right? So we saw an opportunity. You know that same thinking, which is where this hundred plus year old network telephony network would become a uh, uh, just an app on top of broadband. We saw the same thing happening in the business market, where you know broadband penetration in business provided a similar opportunity. So we entered into the business to business space via a series of acquisitions uh, uh, starting about four years ago, and we went from nowhere to now number one on a stand. You know, at, at least as a pure play. Uh, based on revenue and and all of that. So, you know, if you compare us to, you know, what Wall Street analysts, for example, compare us to all, more, more often than not are companies like Ring Central and 8x8. So we're actually bigger than them. So it's astounding to think that, you know, from our origins essentially as a resident, you know, as a pioneer in voice over IP to becoming a, a pretty big residential carrier. So we made a shift from basically a telco to a software player uh, in enterprise square. 
and in four years basically went from nowhere in that market to the biggest you know independent player so we've made a lot of strides in a pretty short period of time and it really does seem that with the digital transformation and everything at the moment it seems to be ushering in a new era of communications are there any particular trends that you've noticed and anything that excites you in that area yeah, it's a great question. I, um, in many ways, the answer to that leads us to the Nexmo acquisition that we did about a year and a half ago. So, as I was saying, you know, we 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 saw this opportunity that that broadband would change everything, and you know, the telephony network would become essentially software on top of a broadband network, and that played out for consumers. That's now playing out for businesses. I think the further evolution of that is that. Telephony is not an app on top of broadband or won't just be an app on top of broadband. It'll become a feature in applications. That's where communication APIs are important and are going to become increasingly important. So maybe the sort of one way to concretize that. So, you know, many people are familiar with Uber. They've used Uber. So, you know, if you look at the ability to call the driver or the ability to message the driver or for the driver to call you or message you, you know, that Uber app, basically powers a $40 billion business, right? Um, And so when Uber looks at, okay, we want to provide in the 60 countries that we operate, for example, we want to be able to provide our customers and our driver network. We we want to give them the ability to communicate with each other seamlessly. Uh, the, The power of what Nexmo or what these communication APIs do is with a few lines of code, their developers can implement these very sophisticated communication capabilities you know, all over the world. So it's a super, super power. It's almost magical, the power of that. So I I think the this next evolution, if you will, is really about telephony not is not just an app on top of broadband, it's a set of features within applications themselves. And I think that's a tremendous opportunity for us, tremendous opportunity for the industry. It really is. It's exciting and like you said, magical too. But one thing that many CEOs or business leaders listening will be thinking about is the culture change to make it a success. Because I think culture change is one of the biggest challenges facing businesses across all industries right now. I mean, how do you begin to build a culture of success in a digital age? That's a great question. You know, I think that um, in many, many of our customers and many companies that we talk to, they're all grappling with the same thing. And, you know, I think they're they even if they're not ready for it, it doesn't really matter what industry you're talking about. Right. So if you're if you're talking about, let's say, you know, what up until 10 years ago, 15 years ago was a fairly stodgy industry, which was retail. You have Amazon there now and Amazon is affecting all sectors of retail. Right. So they, you know, they're even the grocery industry, for example, right. They acquired Whole Foods. And so uh, so all of these companies from Walmart on down are having to contend with dealing with, you know, a, a, a digital native like 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 Amazon, which is just a behemoth. So they're all, you know, whether they like it or not or whether they're ready for it or not, they're they're forced to confront this. So, you know, they, they know that they have to operate differently. They know how they have to embrace um, their own digital transformations, because that's what that's what their customers or the consumer expects, right? Yeah. And this is across this is across the board. I think, um, you know, frankly, if you look at a company like Skype, for example, my theory on why Skype is so popular in enterprises is because really the the rise of the smartphone, right? People get smartphones. I I, I think people incorrectly think that, um, you know, messaging is a millennial thing. It really isn't. I think people get their smartphones, whether it's an iPhone or an Android phone, and they, you know, they had get iMessage or WhatsApp and they love those tools. And when they come to work, they want to use, they, they want a similar kind of tool. So that, I think this is where partly where team messaging has, has really taken off. Um, so I think that all these companies, you know, and then there's been this whole notion of consumerization of IT. So companies have been having to contend with that on a number of fronts. One is competitive. Then the other one is just, you know, changing demographics in the workforce, right? Uh, where I think at least in the U.S., millennials are now are the, numerically the largest part of the, of, of the workforce. So, you know, so there, there's a number of these things that are driving it. Uh, so, so that's one thing, whether they, you know, whether they, it's sort of ready or not, they have to do it. The other thing that I found helpful in terms of driving cultural change in many ways is at the heart of what we do as a company because we provide communication and collaboration solutions for enterprises. So that makes it our tools, our approach 
really make it easy for companies for one to provide tools where people can communicate within the company much more easily right whether it's a phone call whether it's team messaging whether it's sharing information in in teams and so on and so forth right communication and collaboration so one part of driving that cultural change is is to is to implement these kinds of tools and then I, you know i've found that the other thing and this is obviously harder to do in larger and larger companies but is to encourage uh, i know that is to encourage uh, especially senior executives to embrace social media right um there's a lot of talk the irony of it is is that there's a lot of talk about you know digital transformation but in a lot of cases the people in the in the c suite you know people like myself many of them are surprisingly not on social media you know and, and i get it it's it's you know it's a demanding job people don't people look at you know spending time on facebook or twitter or instagram as a waste of time but the thing is is that you know you, you this is an area where you learn by doing and i think part of driving the cultural change is to um in a way that is that the c-suite is kind of more out of touch than than the rest of the company and that kind of slows things down and I've also been to quite a few events and uh, tech conferences this year. And one of the big trends that I'm noticing as consumers, we're now more interested in experience than products. So whether it be interactions or conversations, how are you finding that omnichannel conversations are actually creating exceptional customer experiences? You know, I think customer customer care is customer care, contact centers, all these things, this whole angle is, is an area that's really ripe for for uh, improvements where these where these where this sort of digital transformation where you can see it's a low hanging fruit number one you can drive a lot of changes and so uh, you know one way to one way to answer it is so we 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 have uh, an API which we are just putting in early access called Stitch and what that allows is contextual easily to, for developers to easily implement contextual communication into their application so one example of this is chat now. There's a lot of companies that offer, you know, if you look at omni-channel support, so obviously, you know, the ability to phone, uh, phone, you know, if you, you know, want to call your, let's say your cable TV provider, obviously you can phone in that that's been available for many, many years, but increasingly more and more people will prefer, you know, so email support for some reason has never really taken off, right? Other in, in larger companies, you see it in, in, um, in a lot of tech companies, because they, I think they've implemented a lot of the SaaS backend to do that effectively. But for whatever reason, email, you know, email support just uh, never took off. Um, but chat, chat has now the issue. Uh, so you know, the 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 main notion is you want you want to give people as many uh, ways to get a hold of you as possible, especially ways that they prefer. Um, and increasingly, that's that's you know, messaging based support. And you're even seeing a lot of commerce being driven by messaging as well. And, you know, the, the, the challenge with the, with the chat model, especially if you look at the chat model of support, the current one is that, you know, you, it, it's, it's kind of modeling a voice conversation, not really, you know, so I don't know if you, if your own experience is like mine, which, and, and Neil, which is, you know, you you may be on you may WhatsApp you may have a friend group, uh, you know, with your mates on uh, on WhatsApp or with your family or whatever. And there can be periods where people are talking a lot. There's a lot of you know back and forth, and then uh, and then other times it may be quiet, or you'll 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 read a bunch of things and then chime in the next day. You know, there it isn't it isn't like a real time conversation. In other words, right? Yeah. There are times yeah. where it can be, and many times where it's not. So the 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 thing is with that with the with the current model, you know, current omnichannel model, it's kind of looking that it's using that voice paradigm, which is real time communication. So if you look at chat, you know, you you kind of have to uh, talk to the chat, the agent right then and there. And if you let it lag for a day, that person goes away. Uh, and so, or, or even, an, you know, even 15 minutes, that person goes away, right? 15 minutes of inactivity or five minutes or whatever their default is. But with, with contextual communications, right, it's, it's, it's using that WhatsApp, you know, your, your friend or family group on WhatsApp analogy is you maintain context, right? So you can have a chat, you can have an ongoing chat, say, with, um, with Vodafone or with Verizon or AT&T. Um, right. And, and, and it, it's like a year, let's say you called about a billing issue a year ago 
and you just go back into that chat and you know want to and, and it's and another issue has popped up this the service agent of which there could be different service agents they'll see that establish context know who you are know what your prior issues are and you'll have that ability as well right and so you can have a it, it's a ongoing conversation so it's a different paradigm right but I, I think it's important because a lot of the omni-channel the discussion around omni-channel yes omni-channel is important you're you're really providing avenues you you, you want to make it easy for people to contact you in ways that they prefer and you know mostly they prefer now chatting with you more and more that's the case but i think the chat the model for chatting is what I'm trying to address. And that's that really hasn't changed as much yet. It's beginning to. And I think that'll be a huge thing going forward. Now, you did mention cable TV a few minutes ago. So I've got to ask, I mean, how's net neutrality and the news surrounding that this year affected you guys and your approach at Vonage? It really hasn't. You know, I, I think the... Um, uh, it, we haven't seen any deleterious effects yeah. uh, on our business. Yeah, so I think there... So we haven't seen it. Obviously, we closely monitor it. We've been in this industry for a while, uh, but we haven't seen any you know, negative effects from it as yet. So also, has the response to Cambridge Analytica and consumers' reaction to business processes on personal data, such as GDPR, is that affecting your approach as well, or is that something that's not affecting you? Yeah. It, so look, we've always, since we've, since we've, even, on, even when we were in the consumer business in a bigger way than we are now, okay. We always took privacy very seriously. Um, there are a number of articles, even in the past, where we talk about that um, and a number of things that we've implemented. And since we made the shift into the enterprise space, both security, privacy, um, many of these are mandated um, either by companies' own um, requirements or uh, and or regulatory requirements right so if you're dealing with a financial services company or if you're dealing with a healthcare so you know you have you have uh, privacy and 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 security requirements um, that you know banks themselves have that they have standards that you have to meet or exceed and then of course the US government both state governments federal governments have additional regulatory requirements which they impose on financial institutions which they which they then impose on their you know, their partners and suppliers, uh, such as us, and then same, you know, healthcare. So the bottom line is that we've, you know, when we, when we have uh, built, when we think through products and we build the products, our products, you know, sort of the security and the privacy is central to that. And, and I think that's, that's, that's basically, you know, when you're dealing with enterprise software, that's, you know, that's the rule, not the exception. I think, you know, the Cambridge Analytica and all these other things that you're reading about is uh, it's really a factor in the, you know, for for people providing services uh, or the bulk of their services to consumer. Right. So we have we have that business still. But even then, we, we um, because in some ways, a lot of voice over IP carriers were looked at and in some countries regulated as telcos, there's a lot of stringent uh, privacy and security requirements. Uh, in providing telecommunication services. And so, we, you know, we've, we've been used to that as a company for a long time. Now, when doing my research about you guys, I also no, found I out that you do a lot of helping with tech startups, future-proofing their startup, and also encouraging collaboration. Can you tell me more about that? I think it's incredibly exciting. It is. It really is. So we have, and, and if you look at Nexmo, right, Nexmo is, a set, it's, it's communication APIs, right, communication and collaboration APIs. And so we're really targeting developers. But part of what we, you know, in our developer ecosystem is, it's really us and Twilio in terms of, you know, the, the, the uh, just the sheer scale of our developer ecosystem. And, you know, one of the ways that you build developer build a developer ecosystem and nurture a developer ecosystem so we do a number of events and we sponsor things so there's things like hackathons where um you know and and we've even done it i think in some some i think in us where we've even had, we even had teams that are in high school still for example or you know college students and they'll win prizes so that, that's another way you know, in lieu of uh, getting uh, venture investment, for example, you know, where they'll they'll participate in a hackathon and they win a hackathon or an event or solve solve certain problems, um, and they win prizes or or there's other sorts of benefits. So we have a huge uh, developer ecosystem outreach 
mainly as a part of Nexmo, but that's expanding as we ourselves, you know, have transformed into a pla- as, into a overall platform company. So yeah, that you're right. That is a very exciting aspect of what we do. So what's next for Vonage? There is there anything else you can share with us today about your plans for the future? Sure. Yeah. Look, we we've we've a couple of things. One is we're firing on all cylinders in terms of coming out with new products, new and innovative products. We you know we we've since expanded uh, from being a U.S. based company and uh, let's say Canada U.K. we were in before. Uh, but from the acquisition of Nexmo, we're now, you know, truly a global company. We have significant and growing business in Asia Pacific, obviously in, in um, yeah, Europe, uh, Middle East and Africa and Latin America as well. So we've transformed as a company tremendously in the last couple of years. And I think us becoming obviously growing in the U.S. is 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 a given. We're doing that today. And we'll continue to do that. It's a tremendous, you know, the U.S. market is tremendous for us. But we are becoming, we're, we're already a global company. And I think we're, you know, we're going to embrace that even more so going forward. Well, a huge thank you for coming on today. But before I do let you go, can I just ask that you remind the listeners of where they can find you online or contact a member of your team if they have any questions about our conversation today? Absolutely. So thank you again, Neil. Um, so look, our our. Our website is uh, www.vonage, V-O-N-A-G-E, dot com. And, and your listeners are welcome to email me directly for with any questions they may have. Uh, my email address is omar, O-M-A-R, dot javaid, J-A-V-A-I-D, vonage, dot com. Fantastic. Well, I know how busy you are, so I really do appreciate you taking the time to come on here and speak with me today and share your fantastic story and also how you're giving back as well and helping tech startups. So a big thank you for coming on. Thank you so much, Neil. I appreciate your time. I really enjoyed it. The big takeaway for me there was that businesses must make digital interactions personal and contextually relevant with every single interaction if they're going to thrive and meet today's consumers' expectations. And culture change is obviously going to play a big part in that. And I'm really curious. I mean, do you see this in your part of the world where you're listening to me right now? Do you get frustrated by people wanting to keep doing things the same old way because, hey, that's the way we've always done it? Or do you equally think that the old way is actually better? I want to know. Let me know. As always, email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com. Or tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. My door is always open to each and every one of you, so feel free to reach out. Now, I'm off to London town now to report live from the show floor at the European Summit for Adobe. So brace your feeds for some pretty cool guests coming your way. (laughs) But uh, a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.